Tash Dile and welcome to Tibet This Week, a weekly news on Tibet, His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Central Tibetan Administration. Let's look at the headlines. Take humanity into account for a happier world. His Holiness the Dalai Lama writes to India's president on latter's successful surgery. Speaker Pema Jhungne condones demise of Sri J.M. Mukhi. Tom Lantho's commission hearing highlights Tibet. U.S. State Department report refuses to describe Tibet as inalienable part of China. Office of Tibet DC welcomes change. China faces backlash on retaliatory sanctions. Office of Tibet Washington DC organizes Chinese clubhouse room on Tibet issue. Tibet was never a part of China webinar on Tibet brief 2020. Representative Arya speaks on Tibet at Japan's ruling party headquarters. Italian parliamentarians, civil societies discuss Tibet and Xinjiang. His Holiness the Dalai Lama said, for a happier world, we need to take the whole of humanity into account. To build happy world, happy humanity, uh, national differences, religious differences, Culture differences is secondary. Important is we all same human being. We have to live together on this planet. We want happy world. We want a peaceful world. His Holiness met with the students from Russian University at a virtual talk from his residence on Monday last week. His Holiness the Dalai Lama wrote to the President of India, His Eminence Ramnath Kovind, congratulating him on going through a successful surgery which he underwent recently. His Holiness also prayed for the President's speedy recovery. Speaker Pema Jhungne of the Tibetan Parliament in Exile offered his condolence over the demise of senior Supreme Court advocate, former legal advisor to Ministry of External Affairs and Central Tibetan Administration's legal advisor, Sri J. M. Mukhi, who passed away on Monday last week in Delhi. The Tom Lanthos Human Rights Commission hosted a virtual hearing titled The Global Magnitsky Human Rights Accountability Act Taking Stock on Wednesday last week. According to the event, the hearing was held in order to give panel members and the public an opportunity to review how the sanctions authority has been implemented, how effective the sanctions have been in achieving the objectives, and whether any adjustments are needed to the original statute. The event was co-hosted by Tom Lanthos, Human Rights Commission, coaches, Congressman James McGovern and Chris Smith, who specifically mentioned the ongoing repression in Tibet in addition to Xinjiang. The United States State Department published its annual Country Reports on Human Rights Practices report, organized by the Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights and Labor. This year's report includes over 50,000 words detailing the U.S.'s assessment of the deteriorating human rights in China. This year's report marks a victory for Tibetans. For the report's Tibet section does not describe Tibet as an inalienable part of China, a departure from past reports. This symbolic yet important gesture has been repeatedly campaigned by the Central Tibetan Administration and the Office of Tibet, Washington, D.C. has welcomed the change. The Biden administration's report highlights the concerning mass surveillance of Tibetans, Uyghurs, descendants and religiously affiliated peoples by the China's Ministry of Public Security. The China section details how the Chinese government installed surveillance cameras in monasteries in the Tibetan Autonomous Region and Tibetan areas, which would allow the CCP to cut communication systems during major security incidents. China faces severe backlash for imposition of retaliatory sanctions against parliamentarians, institutions, researchers and scholars across the world, including EU, Belgian, Dutch, Swedish and UK lawmakers. The measures taken by EU were supported and joined by the United Kingdom, US and Canada. These countries issued a joint statement calling on China to stop repressive practices. Speaking about the retaliatory sanctions by China, the Socialists and the Democrats, the second largest group of lawmakers in the European Parliament, 
condemned China's actions and announced that they will not engage with China on the EU-China investment agreement until the sanctions are lifted. France summoned China's ambassador to France Liu Xi and expressed strong disapproval and unacceptability of China's retaliatory sanctions. On 24th March 2021, during the hearing of Chinese ambassador Li Junhua in the Foreign Affairs Committee of the Italian Lower House of Parliament on G20 matters, the deputies of the Lega Nord Party staged a walkout against the Chinese ambassador. A group of 15 members of UK Parliament, led by Tim Lofton, chair of the All-Party Parliamentary Group on Tibet, petitioned the government and the Foreign Secretary Dominic Rapp called for sanctions against the additional officials for human rights abuses in both Xinjiang and Tibet. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson invited some of the MPs, including Tim Lofton, for discussion on China's imposed sanctions on nine UK citizens, including five MPs. Prime Minister Boris Johnson sent a clear message to the Chinese government that the UK stands with the MPs and called to stop the gross human rights abuses in China. China imposed retaliatory sanctions on 10 individuals and 4 entities on the EU side for their involvement in the human rights abuses in Xinjiang on 22nd March 2021. The Chinese liaison officer, the office of Tibet Washington DC, Tsultim Gatso, organized the first clubhouse room on the Tibetan issue in the Chinese language on March 26th with the help of moderators from China News, a club in clubhouse that focuses on the movements of the different oppressed groups in China. Supporters from Uyghur, Hong Kong, Mongol, Taiwan and mostly Chinese from both abroad and mainland China joined and showed their deep interest in knowing more about Tibet. Premised on Dr. Michael Van Vell's newly launched Tibet Brief 2020, the webinar organized by the Office of Tibet, South Africa, refutes China's so-called historical claims over Tibet. Former President of Botswana, His Eminence, Serizi Kama and Kama, said, It is all known that before the invasion, Tibet has always been an independent nation with its own territory, distinct culture and a fully functional government system. One way or the other, China needs to be pushed out. The people of Tibet should therefore have a right to self-determination. That is, the right to freely determine without external interference, their political status and to pursue their economic, social and cultural development as stated by the Tibet Justice Center and Unrepresented Nations and People's Organization report of 1998. Tibet expert Dr. Michael Van Velt spoke about the now 70 year spanning occupation of Tibet by China, emboldening it to carry on with its expansionist agendas elsewhere and called out the international silence which prioritizes its economic interests before the protection of Tibetan basic rights to self-determination. The People's Republic of China has occupied and colonized Tibet against the will of the Tibetan people for 70 years now, and China appears to be getting away with it. But its sovereignty claim to Tibet has no legal basis and rests solely on a historical narrative, uh, a narrative that is sinocentric, that is self-serving, that is part inaccurate and highly misleading. But it's so persistently and forcefully pushed by Beijing that the world has gradually bought into it and today largely treats Tibet as China's internal affair beyond uh, the purview of the international community. Dr. Sewon Gelbo Arya, representative of the Office of Tibet Japan, briefed the Human Rights Committee of Japan's ruling Liberal Democratic Party on the current situation in Tibet at the Liberal Democratic Party headquarters in Tokyo on Thursday this week. Dr. Aryo also spoke on the Chinese government's restriction on Tibetan government officials and their children from visiting monasteries in order to sever their ties with their cultural and religious identity. 
Apprising the Committee on the Tibetan Policy and Support Act 2020 adopted by the United States, Representative Dr. Arya appealed to the Japanese government to support the act as this will inspire other countries to stand against the Chinese government's aggression and repressive policies in Tibet. He also appealed to the Japanese government to pass the Reciprocal Access Act to have the right to enter Tibet. Following the briefing, Representative Arya spoke to the reporters from the major media. On Monday this week, the Italia-Tibet Association, in collaboration with Bitter Winter, an online magazine on religious liberty and human rights in China, the Heritage of Tibet and AREF International, organized a virtual event with Italian parliamentarians to discuss the human rights abuse and environmental degradation by China in Tibet and Xinjiang. The participating members criticized the awarding of Winter Olympic Games 2022 to Beijing and called for its boycott. The event was organized as a follow-up to the 10 March press conference to discuss the possible avenues to send a strong message to China against its repressive policies towards Tibetans, Uyghurs and Hong Kongers. So much for this week. See you next time and have a good weekend.